So when you're introduced to a brand new chart, there's a lot of information on it. It can be very confusing. Work from the outside in. And so what's on the x-axis? Dry bulb temperature. We have a good idea of that. So it's increasing, going in the right direction, dry bulb temperature. What's on the y-axis? And instead of being, which is traditional, over here on the left, they put it over here on the right, but there's nothing wrong with that. It's humidity ratio. The next, identify the other humidity. Three temperatures, two humidities. Where is lines of constant relative humidity on this chart? What do they look like? Yeah, I can see some fingers going like this. Yeah. So basically, this is a line of constant relative humidity. Where is a line of constant 50% relative humidity? I don't know. Where is it, right about here, that 50%? Yeah. Those are three things. What's another one? We have two other temperatures. We have the dry bulb, you have the dew point, and the wet bulb. The dew point is a little easier of the other ones. So if I take, let's say, room air, let's say it's around 25 degrees C, and it's up here at 50% relative humidity, true? Can you read off what is the humidity ratio graphically? 0 0.010 kilogram of vapor per kilogram of dry air. Okay. Now, what you do conceptually to get to the dew point temperature is you cool it such that it gets closer to being saturated air without changing the amount of moisture in it. So if I drop it to 24 degrees, 23 degrees, 22 degrees, 21 degrees, 20 degrees, it'll march over and over on a horizontal line. And let's say I cooled it from 25 to 20 degrees. Did the humidity ratio change? No. Did the relative humidity change? It went up. It went up, right? And then if I continue to cool it, I'll finally get to a point where it is saturated air. What is the temperature now? Yeah, 12, 13 degrees C. So that's how you would read. That's the dew point temperature for the conditions right here of the air at that. It doesn't mean I have to physically cool it. No, it just means if I do physically cool it, it will condense at 12 degrees C. All right. The wet bulb is the next temperature. And it's along these lines that are sloped like this. That's going to be a constant enthalpy. I'll talk about enthalpy in a minute. But you would just project up until you get to this point and then read off the temperature for the wet bulb. The wet bulb, again, was it's evaporating. How does it evaporate in a sling psychrometer, a dry room? So for this, 25 degrees C, 50% relative humidity. What is the wet bulb temperature for that room? Sixteen? Seventeen degrees C? Something like that. So the other one is a specific volume. So we got the wet bulb, the dew point. Those are our three temperatures. We have the two humidities. The other is the specific volume. This specific volume is how much volume per kilogram of dry air. Can you see a line, a constant specific volume on the chart? That's right, like this, sloped. It's going to be, well, it's going to be almost straight up and down, but it's sloped a little bit. Here, what is that line, a constant value of? Specific volume of 0.90. True. And you see the units described. Uh, but it's kilogram of dry air, right? That's just the same specific volume we used. And then the last is mixture enthalpy. Let's find it. What you do is you see that way over here, and it's maybe easier to read that way. So if I'm at 25 degrees C, 50% relative humidity, I'll take along the line projecting back, and it looks like it'll be around 50, 49 kilojoules of energy per kilogram of dry air. This is confusing, 
but let me just describe it. It's the specific enthalpy, so it's lowercase h, of the moist air. So it includes the energy content of the vapor. But it's in kilojoules per kilogram of the dry air. The engineers love it, but you've got to understand it. Let's jump to the next slide. What is this moisture air enthalpy? Well, do this. If I have the mass flow rate of the dry air and I want to multiply it by this, this special what I'll call mixture moist air enthalpy. Well that would be decoupling or separating it would be the mass flow rate of the dry air times the enthalpy of the dry air. That would be one component of it and the other component would be the mass flow rate of the vapor times the enthalpy of the vapor. All right. What was our model for the enthalpy of the vapor? H of G at that dry bulb temperature. If you wanted to calculate the mass flow rate of the vapor, could I replace that by the humidity ratio times the mass flow rate of the dry air? Sure. All right. And then there's one other thing that I need to do. Everybody renormalizes the enthalpy for the dry air. So what they'll do is they'll say calculate the enthalpy of the dry air at the dry bulb temperature but separate off of it the, the, the value at zero degrees C which is 273 Kelvin and that all they do is is a shift or renormalize for the air. So if you want to reproduce the numbers that are in the chart you have to include this shift but all you're doing is changing. So you can get this right out of the air table. Okay? All right. So this is, so you'll have the mass flow rate of dry air times enthalpy of dry air at the dry bulb temperature minus enthalpy of dry air at zero degrees C. Now, M dot dry air times the enthalpy of the mixture. How does this give me the equation for the mixture? Cancel m dot dry air on all the sides, and that's the equation. And I encourage you to check it. Go back. You can do this. You can say, okay, uh, I see that this is around 59, 60 kilojoules per kilogram of dry air. I have the omega humidity ratio. I'll I know the dry bulb temperature, 25 degrees C, so I'll go get H of G at 25 degrees C, multiply by the omega. I'll go and get this one, H, out of the table. You add 273 plus 25, was that 298? Need little interpolation, as well as 273, little interpolation, and then you'll get it. You'll get the same number. All right. Well, this solves some problems. Let me pass out a psychrometric chart. All right. So in preparation for the first clicker question, can you find and put on there on a dot, you know, on your sheet so that you can find 33 degrees C? It's for one ATM, and it's 30% relative humidity. And as soon as you kind of locate that, then I open up for the first question. So everybody got it on their psychometric chart? You got it? All right. Here goes for the first question then. And you can definitely talk to your neighbor. I want the humidity ratio. Let's grade this one. Well, actually, a lot of you were good and spot on on that 10 to the 3, right? So it is point. 0094. Okay, very good. So, ready for the next one? What is the specific volume, meter cubed per kilogram of dry air? Are the units for that? Point eight eight. True. Very good. Uh, I got two people lost. All right, same point. Now, what is the wet bulb temperature? So it was 20 degrees C. 
right? 20 degrees C. Let's do the next one. What is the dew point temperature? Same state. Just tell me the dew point temperature. All right. Very good. Very good, very good, very good. Somebody's playing with me. All right. Next one. Okay. Only, only 30 seconds on this. Dry bulb temperature. I'm not going to say another word. I'm going to look for this one student. I'm going to look for him. I can see who, how you vote. This was the giveaway to make you feel better because the other two were pretty hard. All right, let's continue on. This is the same problem, same state, but what do we have? We have now a volumetric flow rate that comes toward the cooling coil, okay? That's like inlet coming in. That's the volumetric flow rate, meter cubed per second. So the question is, can you calculate the dry air mass flow rate? And I will give you a minute. The M dot of the dry air, if you're given the volumetric flow rate, which you are, how do you do this? Do you multiply or divide by the specific volume of the dry air? Yeah, you divide. And so it's 0.47 meter cubed per second. The specific volume we calculated, 0.88 meter cubed per kilogram dry air. Oh, they want it in kilogram dry air per minute. So 60 seconds is a minute. And it turns out to be 32. Very good. All right. Calculate the water vapor mass flow rate and yes this is the answer for the first question you may want to start there is it omega times the mass flow rate of the dry air which we said was close enough to 32 it's just what was that omega was that point oh Oh, nine, four. And so what does that give us? Very good. All right. Oh, this never ends. Now, after it flows over the cooling coil, it comes out at state two, and it's 15 degrees C. It exits at 15 degrees C. All right. You ready for it? Is 15 degrees C less than the dew point temperature of the inlet? Oh, here we go. 15 degrees is not. I mean, what's the dew point temperature? It's 13. Is 15 less than 13? No. You needed more time? <laughs> All right. Now that we know that it didn't get to the dew point temperature, what is the exit humidity ratio? What is omega 2? Thank you for participating. And it didn't change. It's the same. The inlet because it didn't do out didn't get cold enough now I'm gonna be honest here when you have little thinned passages on your cooling coil and the air comes in some of it gets into intimate contact some of it kind of slips through the middle the stuff that gets into intimate contact could condense a little bit and then when it gets back together it could still be at let's say 15 degrees C but that is too sophisticated for this class that's more for heat transfer class with fins and boundary layers and distance from the boundary layer and velocity profile, temperature profile, actually relative humidity or density profiles. Anyway, uh, the correct answer was B, right? All right. 
What is the exit relative humidity? All right, we're in. In the psychrometric chart, we had on the x-axis temperature, dry bulb, omega. We were out here somewhere. If we just cool, 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 but we never get to saturation. We never get to the dew point. But what do lines of constant relative humidity look like? What's 100%? Where did we start? 30%. You're marching along here, going that way, right? Well, maybe I put the dot in the wrong spot, but you get it. Does the relative humidity go up? Yeah. What is the correct answer? Did you use this? Those that got E, did they use the psychrometric chart? There you go. Good job. All right. These never end, but our class is going to end. All right. The inlet moisture air enthalpy is... All right, we're done. Let's just uh, show it. And those that know that the time hasn't run out will do a crowdsource quick, quick over to. They got seven seconds, five seconds. We'll see. The university is going to give me a pay raise. I can tell. I'm a real teacher. Oh, uh, I, I really want to work through all of these. But the exit moisture uh, air enthalpy is not going to be that high. It's going to be, well, do you want to do it? Do it. There you go. True. Then what you would do with that is you get the cooling load on the coil. But we don't have time for that. But what's the equation for the cooling load? Well, the mass flow rate of the dry air times a change in the enthalpy. And it's taken care of. The moisture content is taken care of in that. So it comes in with high, goes out with low. That's your cooling coil load. It will come in right around 9 kilowatts. Thank you very much for your attention.